So obviously, I know you guys have been following my updates online about my trip to India, but I wanted to take an opportunity to just kind of give you sort of a brief synopsis. You know, I was there at uh, IIMA, which is the Harvard of India. It's the top school there for business, for master's degrees, and students who go there uh, pretty much have their pick of the litter on where to work within India, and a lot of them do go to American companies because American companies that recruit in India recruit from IIMA because they're the top school there. So companies that we would be familiar with here, like the Deloitte's or BCG's or, say, Bain Capital for Tony, um, you know, recruit there from India, from this university. So it's a very, very prestigious institution, and uh, it was a very interesting experience studying there. Um, India is based on a test system, kind of like some of the other Asian countries, where you sort of test into the best middle school, the best you know high school, the best graduate program, and everything up until your graduate program is based on how well you do on a test to get you to the next level. And as a result, a lot of these um, people who I went to school with either went to school undergraduate for engineering which is considered a very big deal in India. That's one of the top careers you can choose. Or doctors, um, much smaller percentage of doctors. Most of them come from IIT in India, which uh, those of you who may have seen the movie Three Idiots, it's sort of one of the more famous Bollywood movies, is sort of modeled after the engineering program at IIT, which is sort of the top undergraduate university. So people come from the most prestigious undergrad programs into this one. So I was, you know, being a musical theater major was uh, an interesting experience because there's actually not a lot of outside of the box thinking at this point. And it's something both the students and the teachers are kind of struggling with because they're used to just studying for the test. So whereas in American universities, the focus is on critical thinking and problem solving, a lot of these students aren't accustomed to that. And some of the professors, of course, because people recruit from IIMA expecting top-notch critical thinking skills, they really expected these, uh, they really expect recruits from there to have a huge handle on uh, on critical thinking skills. And some of them actually have some trouble with that because it's not something that has been expected of them up to this point. It was more about studying for the test before. So, um, so this is, so that was a very interesting experience, especially being that, you know, I'm sort of a wild creative comparatively to a lot of these people. Traveling in India is super inconvenient, especially if you're used to the United States where you just sort of book a ticket, you get on your plane, and unless there's a weather problem or some unforeseeable mechanical problem, you're going to get on your plane on time, you're going to arrive the place you're going on time, and at least within the day that you're supposed to get there. Uh, India is, uh, if you want to travel inexpensively especially, which you can do there, you can travel by train, you can travel by uh, sleeper buses, things like that, because a lot of places do take an overnight trip to get there. Um, you can travel inexpensively, but you just have to expect an enormous amount of inconvenience. Um, a friend of mine and I booked a ticket on a train, but apparently a lot of book people booked at the same time as we did, so we ended up not getting the ticket, but they didn't tell us that till we got to the train station and uh, already had an entire trip booked on the other end of our train. So then we went through... Um, getting kicked off the train in the middle of the night and having to find another way to get to our destination. Uh, I hope to tell that story in more detail maybe on Crashing Glass later, but there, needless to say there were riot sticks involved. So if you're going to travel in India, you definitely give yourself more time than you need. And politically the climate there was quite tense because I was there uh, during the Delhi rape case, which... Uh, you know, over New Year's even, you know, being in Delhi, a lot of people chose not to celebrate in respect uh, for what had happened to that girl. And politically, they are going through an interesting time because, you know, India is way ahead of us as far as women in political power. Uh, they have had a female president and things like that, things that we have not done yet here. But on the flip side, you know, in some of the rural schools, there aren't even women's bathrooms. So women who are teachers or, or female students are actually at a huge disadvantage and they just can't go to school a week a month. So uh, that's definitely something I'm sure we'll explore on Crashing Glass as well. So politically, the climate there was really tense because people are getting very uncomfortable with the system as the way that it is. However, they are very happy to be a democratic society. And I think, you know, they are the largest democracy in the world. They're larger than we are by quite an enormous amount of people. 
And within that, they're each different states, so they're not always all on the same page across the country about matters, and that makes it very difficult to make decisions. I mean, you think the process here is convoluted and confusing. It definitely isn't compared to India. So there were certainly a lot of things that I got to be there for that were very interesting. And, of course, you saw I did an enormous amount of travel, and I hope you'll, you guys will take time to watch all those travel logs and really take that journey with me because, you know, it's interesting. India is so different in a religious way. You know, they don't have the background of heavy Christianity and Puritanism like we do here. Uh, but with that also comes this sort of, with Hinduism, there's actually sort of a gray area around lying or... Um, or sort of ethic, some some ethical issues, uh, and we actually studied it quite extensively in one of our courses about means justifying the ends, because that's still a big question, especially in Hinduism, where and in a country where there is so much poverty and so many people in need, you know, it becomes the sort of Jean Valjean question in Les Mis of what's right versus what's legal and. It's it's a it's a wonderfully fascinating place to live and to be, and I hope that all of you eventually get to have that experience. But in case you don't, you can always watch the travel logs on uh, BaseNet TV, of course, to plug us, BaseNetTV.com, or you can uh, listen to our conversations about it with uh, myself, Jill Henley, and Jessica Moskowitz on uh, Crashing Glass Podcast. So uh, thanks for having me on, Tony, and for letting me talk about India.